Hello and welcome to today's video. This time we're going to be taking a look through my top 10 vintage James Bond related paperbacks. Now I've got about 100 or so in my collection and I've pulled what I feel the absolute cream of the crop from that vintage collection and I'm sure you're going to enjoy looking through them as much as I did. So without further ado, sit back, relax and let's take a look. Okay then, so we'll start off with the honourable mentions. And the first one is this, it's quite a late one. In fact, I think this is almost one of the latest that we're actually gonna to show today. Most of my uh, Bond picks are from the 1960s. But this is the Triad Panther edition. There we are, Triad Panther edition of The Man With The Golden Gun. And Triad Panther, once Pan gave up the rights to Bond, um, they fell to Panther here. And uh, they released the entire lot eventually with this massive golden, gun prop on there which is absolutely fantastic this actual gold prop here uh, was sold recently well fairly recently back in 2019 i think it went for eleven thousand pounds at a specialist james bond auction at sotheby's so i guess that's residing in someone's collection now but um the uh brief was that um the the cover artist, he was a guy called Beverly Labarro, had to come up with um, the entire range, basically, of, the, of a beautiful woman sort of posing with the uh, the golden gun there in, in various positions. And I think out of all the ones that got published, this was uh, perhaps my favourite one. And it really does tie into the book really well. So uh, that's my first honourable mention. The next one is the pan edition of The Spy Who Loved Me. So this was... This jacket um, was used on the first to the fifth editions, um, and it first came out, first published in 1967. Um, it was designed by Raymond Hawkey, and it sort of fits in with the other jackets that he did around that time. It's got that sort of style. And I always think that this was a super memorable jacket. If you say to people, you know, do you remember if, you know, if, do you remember the cover of The Spy Love Me? And a lot of people will say, I oh, didn't that have the burning map on the front? And it was certainly, the, this was the edition because this was the one that came from my dad's collection. He gave me his uh, um, James Bond books. I sort of inherited those. He said, oh yeah, you can have them now. And I always remember that this was the very first copy example of the spy of me that i ever read and um, this was before the uh before the movie came out and i absolutely loved it i really really did so that's also an honorable mention the next one is this one which is uh the first to the six editions of on her majesty's secret service so the first three editions have got slightly different colored wording for on her majesty's secret service then the fourth to the sixth i think this is the fourth one has got that sort of a greenish um a toned uh writing there now i really like this jacket it's very very simple once again it's one of the ones designed by raymond hawkey but you've just got the sort of the different elements you've got the snow the ring and then you know with the with the wedding and bond getting married and then the uh, the splatter of blood i think it's just really really good and although it's very plain which the hawky ones are um and it's not an artwork one which is you know they're easily my favorites i think that one is a really really great one and i do very much enjoy it and then the last of the honorable mentions so we've not gotten to my top 10 yet but the last of my honorable mentions is Goldfinger. Now this is the one that was published in 1961 and it's the first to the third editions of Goldfinger and the cover artwork was done by Pat Owen. Now this edition here, the first edition, features this guy here. Now he's called Ralph Vernon Hunt and Ralph Vernon Hunt was the managing director of Pound Books at this time and he had the honour of portraying James Bond along the cover of this and six other um bond books so they're known as the director's editions because he was the uh the pan director of that time and i think I just think it's a really really great jacket um, i think you know the depiction of bond it actually looks more like ian fleming <laughs> but i've always thought that was a really really striking jacket and uh a real highlight there so that was the honorable mentions and now we'll move on to my actual official top 10 and uh, that is yet another edition of honor majesty's secret service now i really really like this one this is the movie tie-in edition and it's from 1969 and editions you'll notice inside are editions fourth fifth and six and they were actually the original ones so that was like a fourth fifth or sixth edition but they'd have those white covers pulled off and they rejacketed them with these film with the film tie-in one here and i really really like this picture of um lazenby on the front and then all the different um 
uh, Bond girls from that movie, and there was a lot of them, wasn't there? Um, around like the sort of the jigsaw block piece of Lazenby there. It's a real um, memorable jacket. Um, I met Lazenby a couple of times and I'm really gutted I haven't actually um, had this one signed. If I ever do get the chance to meet him again at a show or something like that, I'll definitely take this one along. I also like the fact um, that it's got stills on the inside front covers, which not many of them do have. So uh, also very, very nice. So yeah, that is my 10th favourite vintage James Bond cover. I really like Really like that one. It's a great one. In the number nine slot is this one. So it's not a Fleming book. It's a book about the James Bond phenomenon for Bond lovers only. Once again, published by Panther. And this is also one that I first looked at a copy uh, from my dad's collection. It was really expensive at the time, five shillings. And although the jacket itself is a bit typographical, it does sort of wrap around. So it's a bit of a wrap around one. But the reason it was so expensive was because it had this brilliant sort of photo insert here of uh, the Bond girls in various stages of undress, as you can see. And consequently, copies of this book with really nice tight spines and the, the without the pages all falling out are actually quite scarce. But this is always a very memorable book. And um, even the second edition is very nice, the second British edition. But it's got like a salmon pink cover. I don't think it's as attractive as this one. There's also quite an attractive American edition of this one. So it's definitely a book to look out for. It's got some brilliant contributors. And that photo insert is absolutely knockout. So it's definitely, definitely recommended. The number eight slot then is perhaps the most valuable book we'll see today, which is the American first printing of You Asked For It. So when Casino Royale was published in America by Popular Library in paperback, they just, as was common at the time, um, they retitled it You Asked For It and they put like Casino Royale in the uh, in like brackets in very small writing underneath there. Now, it was published in 1955 and it's not definitive who the actual cover artist was. Now, there was a chap called Ray Johnson. Now, he did a lot of covers for Popular Library at this time. And although this piece is not signed anywhere, the other titles that he did for Popular Library around this period, it does look very much like his style. So the, the sort of the more accepted opinion now is that it is probably Ray Johnson. Um, it is very, very interesting. This one is super rare. Um, even the back, I quite like the little vignette on the back there, Bond at the uh, at the tables there. Um, it is quite ridiculous, really. They don't even call him James Bond. They call him Jimmy Bond there. <laughs> but it's a rarity. I mean, I'd love to have a better copy of this one, but it's so, so expensive to find. And copies don't really turn up very often. But I think it still ranks as one of the greatest Bond covers ever. And uh, yeah, very, very good. So that was in my number eight slot. Number seven is for your eyes only but it's the marvel illustrated book adaptation so um james bond hadn't had a comic book treatment for ages not since the late 1960s so marvel came along and they did um for your eyes only and they published it as like a a one-shot magazine i think it was called marvel super spotlight it then got released in traditional comic book format i believe as a two-parter and then they put it together as a paperback and they did that for a few books of this time um a few movies of this time they put into book form a blade runner being in another really good one and um i just really like it now the actual artwork itself is by an artist called howard chakin um but the book and the adaptation was uh written by larry hammer and inked by vincent coletta and edited by a classic batman editor denny o'neill so um, I just really like it. I think um, it's, it's got a really nice composition. It does look a bit comic bookish, but I don't think that's a bad thing at all. I think it's great. I think it really, really is uh, very unusual, that one. Um, and I, I just think it is super cool. So, uh, yeah, that's why it's in my top 10. In the number six slot, then, is the American first printing of Octopussy. This is by signet books and um it just features that sort of classic photo of fleming you could almost think the gun had been fired and he was whoosh, blowing blowing the barrel of the gun there um i just think it's a really really distinctive jacket um this one came out in 1967 and uh i think it's just great it's, it's just a really just well composed jacket and it's one of my favorites um such a shame that you know fleming himself didn't live a little bit longer to write a few more you know 
it would have been great but there you go um, now number five once again it's a non-bond one um, but it's the diamond smugglers this is the first printing of it and this work this one's got artwork by taylor and although it's not a bond novel the research that ian fleming did when he was writing this book was clearly the basis for diamonds are forever now this first edition here was published in 1960 and I like it just because of all the different sort of elements there. You know, you've got sort of the investigations into perhaps the diamond smuggling. You've got a shady looking guy there by the Land Rover. You've got someone obviously flying diamonds around the world. And then you've got a little plethora of diamonds in the belly band across the middle. Um, it's great, great stuff. A little picture of the diamonds on the back there. If you've never read this, it reads like a thriller. And it just shows what a great writer Fleming was in general. Um, I think it truly is fantastic. It's illustrated as well. They did re-release it with like almost like a plain black cover with a hand on holding a pile of diamonds, which is rubbish, absolutely rubbish compared to this one. I, poor old Taylor must have been gutted when they reprinted it. Um, but there we are. That's the original one from 1960. And I think it's an absolute beauty. And that was my like number five in my top 10 James Bond book covers. Now in the number four slot is another movie tie-in edition. And although this isn't exactly got the greatest jacket, the reason I love this one so much is because all the way back in, what was it, 2005, I went to uh, one of the NEC memorabilia shows and it was a James Bond special. And there was lots and lots of James Bond cast and crew there. There was directors, there was all sorts of the actors there. And I got to meet Maud Adams and Britt Eklund at the same show. Um, I got a friend who actually took some photos of me with Britt Eklund and um, sadly I've not been able to get them off him. Also meeting Richard Keel and uh, George Lazenby was at the same show. Um, it was a really, really great James Bond show. I just I just loved it. And there was a lot of James Bond guests there. I think director John Glenn was there as, as well. He just uh, published a book. It was brilliant. Um, so this is it. It's the signed one. I usually have this one on display next to my number one choice, which we'll see um, in a minute. Um, but sadly, um, I never got to meet Roger Moore. And Roger Moore did do some tours. It was sort of an evening with um, with James Bond, I think they were called. Um, and I never got to got to go and, and meet him and, and get him to finish off what would have been a really nice set of if I could have got all three but that's not to say anything away from it it was still um, a very memorable day and I'm very pleased that, that edition that movie tie-in edition of the man with the golden gun um, is there it was just the 13th and 14th printings which had that jacket from back in 1974 so in the number three slot then for me is this beautiful cover for From Russia With Love and it's by artist Sam Peffer and this one was first published in 1959 and it was used from the first to the fifth edition so it's such such great um, artwork I believe this is the first of it yeah um, it was such great artwork that it was used on five consecutive editions and um, I really like the use of perspective it's superb there um, you know the train there I even like the moon that's <laughs> There's poking behind the clouds there. Um, the detail on Bond himself is fantastic. Right down to his um, Beretta over the, the shoulder there. Very, very, very good indeed. It's such an atmospheric cover. One of the best, in my opinion. I just love that one. So uh, that is why it gets the, uh, the top three position there at number three. In the number two slot, I've got the original printing for Casino Royale. So this was the very first PAM book that launched the series. Um, the artwork is by um, a fellow called Roger Hall. And uh, this was first published in 1955. And it's the first and second printings of Casino Royale that have this very distinctive jacket here with uh, the artist's first and possibly the first ever depiction of James Bond um, sat at the, uh, the card table there. I mean, really just sort of sum up um, the you know, the book itself. I always would have loved to have seen, because you can sort of see there's like a guy there that's been cut off by the title. And I would love to see a version of this without that Casino Royale um, book title plastered all over it, um, just to see sort of what it looked like. But there it is. That's my number two slot. And I think it is truly iconic that one i mean it really is it's quite a collectible title now um really nice copies are you know best part of 100 pounds to pick up a copy of this now and it's it's just a great great uh book so uh that gets my number two slot but my number one 
is this one. So it's Dr. No. And this is the uh, the first printing of Dr. No, which was uh, published by Pan in 1960. Now, this one's got a particular soft spot in my collection, because although it's not the greatest of copies, you can see it was once taped down the spine there. It's got a little um, scratch on the, on the front cover there, sticker removal mark. You might spot that down there it's been signed by cover artist Sam Pepper. So I got to meet Sam at one of the paperback shows, I think about 1990. Um, and I took this copy of Dr. No up with me, along with a lo load of other Pam books and a couple of digits and a few other publishers. And uh, he graciously signed uh, the whole lot for me. I just think this is great because this is obviously before the movie. So you've got Pef's rendition of Bond there and, and Honey Rider. Um, they really do look like They've been, you know, chased through the swamp, um, just like in the book, with um, his depiction of Dr. No there. Absolutely fantastic. And uh, this jacket was used on the first to the third editions of Dr. No. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. So there you go. That's my top 10 vintage James Bond paperback jackets. Now, were there other ones that you might have included if you'd have done your top 10? Do please leave a comment down below. I'd be really interested to know which ones you might have put in yourselves. So I do hope you've enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed getting the books out and having another look at them. They're just gorgeous and I really, really enjoy collecting these vintage James Bond paperbacks. If you have enjoyed today's video, do please give the video a thumbs up. Do please hit that subscribe button if you're not already for regular vintage James Bond and vintage paperback content. And I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.